Hello, hello everyone. We come back to Codetober. I am so sorry that I had to put this on pause. So if you were following my Codetober videos, my last one was on October 27th. Um, and I did the how to generate examples from GitHub to open in the Zero Playground, which is awesome because now all of the tutorials that we have in um, developer.millsoft.com that include data with code, now you can just open them uh, directly in the Zero Playground using one button, which is awesome. But before that, I was doing a bunch of he he head and tail recursive. Uh, sorry, head and tail constructor. And I was like trying to understand how that worked because it was new to me. Um, before that, I did tail recursive functions, recursive functions, um, and a bunch of more deal with stuff. So um, it is now December. <laughs> um, if, you, if you're following my video so far uh, on real time, it is now December. I am very sorry. I had some personal stuff that I needed to take care of um, and I couldn't continue the videos on October. I'm just missing four videos, but I'm doing them now. So I hope you like this. Um, this time I am going to show you how to use, uh, how to debug data with code using the data with extension in Visual Studio Code. So if you're new to this, I will put the link to the tutorial in the description. Let me open that before I forget, because then I forget to add it. Hold on, hold on. Hold on just one second. Um, and I'm going to show you here the link so you know how that looks like. So here I am in the tutorials and then did we um did we have extension for visual studio code if you go here thank you sonali for creating this tutorial um you will see all of the steps uh right from installing the extension uh the prerequisites like java which i recommend to use version 8 maven and visual studio code how to do all of that how to install it blah 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 um and how to get familiar with the extension if you're not familiar with it so i'm gonna add this tutorial in uh, the in the description below. And then I'm going to show you how to debug code. Once you have everything installed, um, you will see basically this. And then if you click on run, you will see the preview, which is six. Let me do that again, just so you know that I'm not lying. <laughs> there you go. Um, and hold on. Also, I am missing something. There. So you can actually see uh, my commands. Um, there you go. Okay. So yes, this is running now. Um, and what I'm going to show you is how to debug this code. So what we are doing here is basically just summing. Let me put more numbers Four, five, save. And then we run this. The result is 15 because this is like one plus two. And then that plus three plus four plus five. And the result is 15, but we want to see these going uh, like one step at a time, right? So I'm going to put a breakpoint. You literally can just click here and create breakpoints. Um, if you're not familiar with debugging code in general, you should get familiar with that first. Like what is debugging? What is a breakpoint? What is step into, step over and all of that? But you don't have to do that. You can just follow this video. So for example, we have this code. I put a breakpoint here and by the way, you can also do this, like just put it all in one line. That's fine. I just wanted to separate it because I wanted to show you how the different steps look like and where we are going through this. So now that we have this, you can just click here on run mapping. If you click on the button from here, it's just going to give you the output, but it's not going to run the debug. So if you click here in run mapping at the top, this will actually start the debugging stuff. So here you can see that there is uh, the controls to step over, step into, and blah, blah, blah. So I am here now. Um, wait, where is it? Here. So uh, where can I move this thing? Okay, yeah, here's fine. So we have this thing. 
here we can see the variables here's the watch if you want to watch any of the variables i don't want to so i just want to see this um, and we start with the array and when i click on step into or f11 i will get into the reduce and then i click on it again and then i get into this thing so um, if you're not familiar with the reduce function I can give you another tutorial for that. I will also leave it in the description below here. So you can just go through that and look, you have the thing where you can open in Playground directly and you can see everything there. Awesome. But yeah, you can just go through this. It will tell you how the step by step process works, how this um, is going through everything and so on uh, you can just go and check that out i will put in the link link um, in the description but in summary it's just like doing what i told you one plus two and then the result plus three plus four plus five what this means this is the actual value of the iteration we're in and this is the accumulator of what we have so far since this is our first iteration, our accumulator is actually the first value, which is one. And then our actual value is going to be two. So we have uh, two plus one. This will be three. So step in two. And now the accumulator has, let me make this bigger. Now the accumulator is three. And now our value is three because we are here now. So now three plus three is going to be six. So now our accumulator is six, and then we are here at the four. So now we have four plus six, this is going to be 10. And I believe this is going to end because 10 plus five, that will be, end. oh, I can still see it, okay. So the accumulator now is 10, and now my value is five because it's the last one. And then if I click here again, this is done. So the reduced result is 15. And if you continue, it will just stop. And that's it. And it doesn't give you the result here in the output. For that, you have to run this. So it's just to like go through the code and debug it and being able to do that. So in summary, the only thing you have to do is to uh, get your mapping, make sure it works, very important. And once you notice that it does, it does work, then you can click on Run Mapping Make sure you put a breakpoint, because if you don't put a breakpoint, it's not going to run. And that's it. You will have your variables, and you will be able to step into or step over or continue, um, however you want to do, and check out what's happening in your code. That's it. Um, something that I do want to mention, though, um, I when I tried this first, I tried it at a live stream that I can put you here. Uh, this is the live stream that I was doing. Can we debug data with code in Visual Studio Code? Yes, we can. I'm going to add this link too because I did encounter some issues when I was first trying this. I was getting like something about a port. Um, where is it? Uh, like I was not able to run this because I was getting an error saying that the port here, you can see here the error. Uh, that like a port was not working or something like that. So I did have to do this several times because I was getting errors. Uh, one of the errors, I did not know how to resolve it. I don't know what happened. I just closed and opened and it kind of worked. But the other error was about a port. It was saying that the port was not available. So I just did like a Java process thing to kill the other port that I was using. Yeah, see, uh, someone was <laughs> telling me how to do the thing to close the port. And after I did that, I was able to do that. So if you have any of those issues, uh, you can go to that video where I actually get those errors and solve them um, in case you get the same thing that I did. But if you don't and it works perfectly at the first try, then... Congratulations, you can deal with, you can deal with your debug. <laughs> you can debug your data with code. Um, and that's it for this video. I will see you then in the next video that I will upload in a few minutes. <laughs> All right. Thank you so much. This is Codetober Day 28, recorded in December. All right. I will see you in the next video.
Bye.